but like I would rather see Ong Bak Thai Warrior or okay. Crank or like you know the Transporter Eight or you know any yeah. one of these much better <laughs> action movies. So you're looking for more genre inventiveness. If there were exactly, like, if it would right. have been newer, different, if it didn't remind you of Soul Calibur, if it didn't remind you of all these other movies where you've seen similar sort of action sequences. Right. Here's the thing. What I thought I was getting going into this was a genre mashup. You've got the schoolgirls with the katanas and the guns and the steampunk and the future and the zombies and the orcs and all these ingredients to just mix and mash. Yeah. Like it's past zombies now. We're past vampires. We're now mixing it yeah. all together. So there's no can... multiple levels for you. That's the one reality and they're all fighting through this reality. That's all I care about. If they want to put backstory in to flesh it out, great, do that. Okay. But the thing is, if you're going to go with all the, the genre mashup, you've got to make it come together. You've got to make it interesting to watch. And that's the thing is that Snyder just is not a good action director. Right. It was yeah. all boring. There was one scene where she was killing the uh, robots with the katana because that was kind of cool. She's going to go up just by herself like go and kick and butt. Other than that, it was everything I'd seen before a, a thousand times. Yeah, yeah. All cliche. Yeah. Just and am- nothing inventive. Amazingly boring. I, I, <laughs> right. I cannot believe how boring, boring it was. Yeah. yeah. I guess I, when I see preview, I kind of like fantasize of here's like what, what it could be. You know, this awesome. Yeah. And I kind of wanted to see like a little little mix of Wizard of Oz. Okay. Where the right. Wizard of Oz, the first 30 minutes, we meet her in Kansas. And we meet all the characters that once the tornado takes her away, they're going to now be in a different form. Okay, in, in, sure. In the yes. world of Oz. Yes. Okay. Now we can add in maybe a little bit of Alice in Wonderland. Now those people from that reality represent her ideas and relationships to those people in reality, and now she can work through them. It's almost like that. this fantastic wow. reality is like some sort of psychological workshop where you can overcome your neuroses. Which is almost what they promise you, because that first scene, they come in and she's got the stage, and she says, this is where the girls work through things. Yeah, yeah. and it's like, okay, it kind of but seems we, like that's where Zack Snyder maybe has... Just to abandon it. Yeah. Yeah, your version's much better. So, <laughs> but, but see, but it's character... I want to see your movie. But then it's character-based, because it's right. like you start with the character, and now... Yeah. And now, once you know, because the whole thing with music videos and, like, ba- music videos and montages is, like, a way to say... No story. It's like French for no story. Because it's like, <laughs> there's no drama or character interactions here. So we're just going to skip over this time frame so we can get to this next part. Right. There's something important did happen here, yeah. but just for plot point reasons. Right. So we're just going to show you briefly what happened. Right. So yes. Yeah. That's... So then, and as she as she battles through, she gets stronger. And if he wanted to make this female empowerment, don't have her start out being able to kick these giant right. uh, samurai dudes. No, she gets her ass kicked. Yeah. Her. In any good video game, you power up as right. you go through levels. Right. Men- Metroid exactly. doesn't start off with the way with the, all the missiles and the bombs and the wave gun and everything. Yeah. She has to build them up over yeah. time. So World of Warcraft, you got to put in hours. Yeah. to get you know to get your experience. Yeah, on. if you want to make a movie based in a you know that's like being a video game, that's cool. But yeah. like you know, do it right. Yeah, and then it <laughs> seems like the whole mashup thing would come from her walls of reality breaking down. Maybe they're giving in the reality reality they're giving her these weird drugs, and maybe the lobotomy will be the last thing. And she's trying to fight through their, you know, they're attacking her there, like trying to make her like a conformist, you must, you know, comply, kind of be more 1950s kind of girl. And she's trying to fight with her creativity to be who she's meant to be, you know? So kind of like Girl Interrupted meets The Matrix. Yeah, Girl Interrupted meets <laughs> The Matrix meets Wizard of Oz, like that. Because there's no carry through for like steady opponents and we don't have a journey for her, it just becomes like, okay, we are, we're back in the whorehouse. Now we need to get the knife. But it, we know it's going to work. And we know in the fantasy flash forward a reality dimension thing, it's going to be cool looking, kind of, but it's going to be boring. And so by the end, you're like, okay, how's this going to end already? Let's just skip to the end. Yeah. Then he gives us that final scene as if it's like, now I'm going to blow your mind like M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> you knew how to do it. <laughs> and, oh, she started the fire in real life. <laughs> and Don Draper is like, she looked at me weird. And, yeah. Uh, and it's just so anticlimactic. And it's like, well, yeah, we kind of got that, Zach. That's where you were kind of saying the entire movie, and that's like a big revelation or anything. That yeah. was like, it was kind of obvious. Yeah. Like, it was so like, that's even obvious. And yeah. It's just like, okay. And then what would you think about the sensei on the bus at the end? I like that. I like yeah. that Scott Glenn showed up in the bus and rescued the girl. I think that was a nice touch. He was probably the best character. He the was movie. the best part of the movie. And he was, yeah. Come, although, how, I love that every line he left the girls with was like a complete just cliche. Like, <laughs> don't write a check with your mouth 
your ass can't cash. <laughs> yeah. That was oh, that was cool back in yeah forty. Maybe that in nineteen fifty. That yeah. was an original line. Like, yeah. What? It's like Zack Snyder was like, okay, he's supposed to be the sensei character. So that means he just says sensei stuff. He doesn't have a personality <laughs> or motivation. Again, see, I don't have any problem with it just being like a bold face. This is this archetypal character. Okay. This is the sensei character. Yeah. This is, but make him interesting. Yeah. <laughs> make him, yeah. write him good dialogue, you right. know? And have him do weird, quirky, un- just that's, unpredictable. That's something that Tarantino is a, is brilliant at, is playing with archetypes, making them fascinating, and making them really interesting and wonderful to play with, yeah. you know? Because everyone kind of knocks him for having the, uh, what do they call him, like the video store clerk background. Right. But, I mean, if he's watched all those movies, he knows what's been before, and he can now t- turn cliches on their head and come up with new stuff. Right, and there's a difference between knowing, like, seeing everything has come before and turning the cliches on their head and then just repeating everything has come before. Yeah. Which is what... And Zack Snyder's With like, a new green screen backdrop. Which yeah. is what we got, you know? Yeah. Watches TV for five hours and flips through every channel and then just writes whatever comes to mind. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, that's my inspiration. Yeah. Big thumbs down. Disappointment. Big disappointment. I mean, this, is, this, is, this hurt like, me, man. Again, it's the curse of too high expectations. Yeah. At least it was tempered. At least I didn't see it opening weekend. I would think I've been like... Angry, like, like visceral, IMAX like, opening like, weekend. If, yeah, if I paid IMAX tickets, oh, I'd be furious. Like twenty bucks, yeah. And just like what the hell? Yeah, I would have loved to have seen the audience reaction in a big crowd, but I mean, if we're feeling like bored, everyone was pretty much feeling. Yeah, bored. this was almost like his carte blanche. kind of like I can do what I want. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, he wrote it, he directed, he had everything. It was this was his baby, and it's. I mean, I am now afraid of what Superman's going to look like. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to this at all. Though, okay, Nolan is supposed to be what? Like, writing slash producing, supervising that movie? Well, hopefully he has the writing, him and his brother, like, do some of the writing. So do you think Snyder can make Superman look cool, and Nolan will be able to make it feel and make sense and have a story and all that? Again, it's almost like like Zack Snyder can create great comic book images. He can, like, replicate panels. Okay. (laughs) He can, like, like some of my favorite shots from Watchmen were those recreations of that amazing artwork. Like the scene on Mars with the giant jewelscape, like, building. Yeah. That was awesome. Oh, that just blew my mind. Totally. It was gorgeous. And by, but like in terms of actual like putting things together to make action sequences, not so much. It okay. works much better flatly on a page, yeah. you know, like yeah. it does actually in motion. Yeah. So, so, I mean, he's definitely got a visual talent, but it's like, it needs to be really controlled. Yeah. And there needs to be someone who's like, okay, you know, here's how you do it. You know, again, I, he's like that little kid. He's like the 11 year old. Yeah. Sees daddy shaving and <laughs> takes the razor out and like, you can pretend. So, someone needs to be like, you got you got the touch here, but just please, you know, use it wisely and yeah. don't don't be so uncontrolled. So he's a little bit above Michael Bay right now for me. Bold statement. That's a bold statement. <sighs> yeah. I haven't seen 300 in a while. I probably should write it again. I remember just loving it in the theater. I remember seeing it again with a riff tracks in the background, which is hilarious. If you I've go to rifftracks.com riff yeah. and download the 300, it's it's brilliant. <laughs> and that's all I've seen it. I've only seen it those two times. Yeah. And I so like I don't, 300 a lot. Yeah. I remember, and, but Watchmen, that's a whole separate cut. Like, I was very disappointed, you know, right. and I was, I'm a huge fan of the graphic novel, a huge fan. Never saw the Owl movie. <laughs> I haven't either. I've heard the same kind of thing where it's like, it great visuals, yeah. and even though it's based on a story, it's kind of like, uh, story's not, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I would say he has more story skill than a Michael Bay. Again, I don't hate Michael Bay. It's just, he's good at one thing, right? and it infects everything else in the movie. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's like, you need to have a group of people make a film, not one person. Like a basketball team or something, you know? Right. If everyone in their position is the best at what they are, then it'll be a great experience, but... If it's like, well, I'm the action director, everything needs to just be fast and uh, slow-mo shots and all this, then it's going to infect the story and the characters and has revealed himself to be less than a complete filmmaker. It's kind of like in football when you've got the offensive coordinator running the show. Like when like Mike Martz is not a great head coach. Okay, yeah. You know? Because he filters everything through off- offensive mindset. mindset. Right. He's great. Just stick him in, you know, let him be the offensive coach. Let him <laughs> yeah. do that, you know. But, like, you also need a Lovey Smith to balance him out, you know. Right. So, has there ever been a movie that was directed by a team? Like, possible? Like, do they do that? Well, like, are, 
I mean, the Coens probably do it, but they don't. They one takes credit. Right. For this. There's some movies where I like, definitely the I know the director credits a lot to cinematographer. Yeah. So there's that in- involvement. I'm worried here because it's gonna be okay, Zach. We gave you freedom. It didn't work out. So yeah. now you got to make more adaptations, or you got to do this. And again, not that adaptations are horrible. So we're both looking forward to Priest. Yeah, very much, very much. Looks good. It's just interesting. You know, you yeah. give someone like Nolan carte blanche, you get Inception. I think this was like Zack Snyder's attempt at making Inception, and yeah, it, we just he just showed. Like you said, it's like watching Dad, like playing, trying to play grown up. Yeah, you know. And it's like, no, you're, you know, go back to the dojo and practice wax on, <laughs> wax off a little more. You can become Miyagi, but you got to put the work in. Yeah. All right, so that sucker punch, yeah, we got screwed, and it's a disappointment. Yep. Hopefully it doesn't lead to more movie apocalypse uh, behavior. I'm gonna, This has to be movie apocalypse. It's not movie hope. I think it's movie hope, actually, okay. because it wasn't an adaptation. It was actually an original creation. Right. And it was inventive. It just wasn't executed well. Yeah. So it, I think it's in terms of, like, they, they tried something new. They just tried it with the wrong people. They tried to, yeah, they tried to push boundaries. Right. Like the preview, uh, it's always a big warning sign when it's like, so brazenly, you will be unprepared. Right, it's yeah. Like, you're just laying it on a table being like, I got the biggest one in the room right here. Yeah. You better be able to deliver. And there's movie hope elements, but then like the result seems to be like it's going to feed a movie apocalypse sort of thing where because of it didn't deliver well on its promise, it's going to be like, we don't want to make movies. Well, like and that's movie. the thing. That's the problem is that if it was based on an established yeah. property, then it probably would have done better in the theaters. Right. Because it was an original movie, because it was original thought with nothing, with no fan base behind it, that was the big thing. Sucker Punch gets KO'd by the Wimpy Kid. Wimpy kid. <laughs> that was the big headline. I didn't read that story. Yeah, that was the big headline. <laughs> but that's the way we talked about with the A-Team movie, with the Losers. The or, Losers. Yeah. Right, which is the exact same thing as A-Team, but just, it was an original concept, it wasn't an established property, and so no one went to see it. Right. And that's that's the scary part. That's, yeah. that's, the, that's the scary element of it. Dark Knight made a billion dollars. Inception made like 850, 850 yeah. million worldwide. So that's amazingly impressive. Right, for an original Pretty original yeah. idea, even if it's an adaptation, it still has to be made well. If a similar idea would have been an adaptation, he still would have messed it up. No, he still would have messed it up. Yeah. No, no, I'm that's just saying that the way I think the way Hollywood thinks right yeah. now yeah. is that if it had been established property, it probably wouldn't have tanked opening weekend. Right. Because at least with an established property, you've got all the fanboys lining up to see it right. opening weekend. Yeah, and That's regardless the, of the quality, there's an illusion. Like when we went to see Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. We went to see it, even though it had gotten horrible reviews, because it was Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. And we wanted to see how, what they did with what it. What they did with it. So It's got the, the built-in the audience. The curiosity factor right. goes beyond, oh, it'll be... We know it's going to be bad, but we're just curious. Yeah. So we're in some dangerous story times here. <laughs> yeah, we certainly are. So with okay. that said, Jonas, what are you up to lately? The blog continues at zenandtheartofwaitering.blogspot.com. You can become a fan at facebook.com slash zenandtheartofwaitering. And you can buy the book, Zen and the Art of Waitering, at smashwords.com slash book slash view slash 13249. If you don't want to buy the book, download a free sample. Check it out. Just get a taste. Just get a taste. He's like a heroin dealer. <laughs> Once you get a taste. Based on my wisdom and my genius, then you <laughs> won't be able to say no. That's why I keep coming back. <laughs> so all the links are available in the description area of this video. Consider yourselves advised until next time. Remember Hollywood or StoryCorp always gives you more of what you pay for. And as always, long, long live, live good movies. movies.